This is Lesson 91, BHDL Example 61. In this example, we'll write a BHDL program for a door lock code in which you'll press four push buttons selected from the rightmost three push buttons on the FPGA board in order to uh, simulate unlocking a door code. We'll also introduce the idea of a VHDL package. So here's how it'll work. The first correct button selected from buttons 2 through 0, that is the rightmost three buttons, will be the switch settings, switch 7 to 6, that is the two leftmost switches, where valid s settings will be 0, 0, 0, 1, or 1, 0, corresponding to button 0, button 1, or button 2. In other words, if the first correct button is button 0, then the two leftmost switch settings will be 0, 0. So you use the switches to encode the code. If it's 0, 1, then button 1 would be the first button to push. If it was 1, 0, then button 2 would be the first one to push. Then the second correct button would be selected from the same three buttons and will correspond to switch settings, switch 5 to 4, that is the next two. And then the same for the third and the fourth correct buttons. They'll correspond to the switch settings, 3 down to 2 and 1 down to 0. So, to test it, we'll make this top-level design where the three input buttons, button 0, button 1, and button 2, will go through this OR gate so button 0, 1, 2 will go high if you push any of the three buttons. So anytime you push a button you're going to get a clock pulse out here. <clears throat> and then we'll connect button 1 and button 2 to this 2-bit input, call it BN1 to 0. So if you're pressing button 1, this input code will be 0, since you're not pressing any of these two buttons, but you'll get a clock pulse, so that selects button 0. If you press button 1, then you'll get a 0, 1 here, and if you press button 2, then you'll get a 1, 0. So the three possible button settings will be 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, corresponding to button 0, 1, or 2. And then we've got to make a state diagram for this door lock module. We'll have two outputs for pass and fail. So here's the state diagram. We'll start at S0, and if the first button you press, corresponding to this BN, corresponds to switch 7 down to 6, that is the two leftmost switches, then that by definition is the correct button, and you'll go to state S1. The next correct button will be if BN is equal to switch 5 to 4, in which case you go to state S2. The third correct button pressing corresponds to switch two down, three, 3 down to 2, and the fourth correct button pressing corresponds to BN switch 1 down to 0. <clears throat> so if you press all four buttons correctly, you'll go from S0 to S1 to S2 S to S3 to S4, and this will be pass. <clears throat> However, if the very first button you press is not the correct one, that is, does not correspond to the two leftmost switches, then you'll go to state E1, indicating an error. But now you still have to press three more buttons, because, of course, you don't know that it's the wrong code at this point. So the second, third, and fourth button pressings will take you to this final fail state, which will turn on the fail light. If the first button you press is correct, but the second one is wrong, well, then you'll go to E2, and then the next two button pressings will get you to the fail. You might press two correct buttons and then the third one's wrong, in which case you'll go to E3 here, and then the last button will take you to the fail state. You might press three correct buttons and then the last one is wrong, of course it takes you to the fail state. So there are lots of different ways to get to the fail state. Now once you're in the fail state, you can start over again. If you press the correct button That'll bring you back here to state S1, and you're on your way to a correct one. Of course, you might fail on the way, too. Of course, if you 
press the wrong button, you'll go back here to E1 and then press three more buttons. It doesn't matter if those are correct or not. And it, we have it if you get to the pass state, you can start over again and press the correct state to go back to S1 and do it again. Or, of course, if that one's wrong, then you'll go back to E1. So this is the state diagram for the door lock code. So we can write the uh, VHDL program in a similar way that we did for the uh, sequence detector. We'll have inputs clock and clear. Now we've got switches coming in. BN is our two-bit input that we have from the three switches. And then we have pass or fail out. So we had how many states? We have a type state type is. We have S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. These, and then we also have E1, E2, E3, E4. E1, E2, E3, E4. So these are the state types. And then we'll define the two signals, present state and next state, to be of type state type. So they're one of these. And then we have our usual state registers. If clear equals 1, the present state is S0, else on the rising edge of the clock, present state gets next state. And then we'll just implement the state diagram using a big case statement. In this case, the process has present state, BN, and switch in the sensitivity list. Of case present state is when S0, if BN is switch 7 down to 6, then the next state is S1, else the next state is E0. When you're in S1, if BN is switch 5 down to 4, then the next state is S2, else the next state is E2. If you're in S2, then if BN is equal to switch 3 down to 2, then we go to S3, else we go to E3. If you're in S3, if BN is equal to switch 1 down to 0, then we'll go to S4, else we'll go to E4. S4, else we'll go to E4. And when you're in S4, that means you've, had, you've made the pass state. Well, then if you start over again, if the BN is switched six down to, 7 down to 6, then you go back to S1 corresponding to the first button being correct. Else you go over here to E1. Now when you're in E1 you always go to E2. When you're in E2 you always go to E3. And when you're in E3 you always go to E4. And of course when you're in E4 if BN is equal to switch 7 down to 6 starting over again you'll go to S1. Else you go to E1. And when others, we'll just make next state equal to S0. So that takes care of our C1 module in our more machine state diagram. And now for the output C2, process present state. If the present state is S4, then we'll make pass equals 1, else pass is 0. And if the present state is E4, then we'll set fail to 1, else fail is 0. So that's the VHDL code for the door lock. And we can simulate it. Here's the clock. We'll set the switches to 86, and you can verify that corresponds to a code 2012. So you would press button 2, then button 0, then button 1, and then button 2. And we can test it. Suppose you press 0210. Well, that's fail, so fail comes on. So you start over again and you press 2012 and pass comes on, so that's correct. And this shows you what the present state and the next state is in each case. Here you started out okay, well you started out at E1, that was wrong, but you kept going and then you did S1, S2, S3, S4, and that gives you the pass state. So you can make a top-level design, M clock coming in, switches, the buttons, and the uh, LED, uh, LEDs. We'll use 5 down to 4 for the two LEDs. 
Now in the architecture, remember we have to list the component declarations. Here's the component declaration for clock div, component declaration for door lock, component declaration for clock pulse. And then we have the signals clear, clock 190, clock pulse, button 0, 1, 2, and the BN1 down to 0. <coughs> clear as usual is button 3, button 0, 1, 2 is button 0 or button 1 or button 2. Uh, BN1 gets button 2, BN0 gets button 1. And then we just do the port maps in the usual way. Clock div gets wired up, clock pulse gets wired up, <coughs> and the door clock gets wired up. Its clock goes to clock pulse. <coughs> and we'll put pass to LD5 and fail to LD4. <coughs> now you've noticed that uh, we've always included these component declarations uh, in our architecture. Remember after the word architecture and before begin. But as we get more and more compo components in our designs, this becomes um, uh, complicated and sort of annoying. So what you can do is you can introduce a VHDL package. <coughs> we'll call this one door lock components VHD. So it's a VHD program. You have the usual library IEEE and this use IEEE 1164. But then instead of entity we just put the word package door lock components is and then we just list the component declarations. Here's the clock pulse, here's clock div, here's door lock. And you say end door lock components. So this is a separate VHDL file that's in your project in the same directory as your project in your source directory. And now your main program, all you have to do is say use work dot door lock components dot all. This work means it's in your working directory. And then you see things get simplified because you have your usual entity for the top level design. But in the architecture now, we don't have to list all the components here like we did before. You just put the signal declarations, then begin, and then the port maps. So this cleans up the top level design and makes it much shorter, and the component declarations go into one big package. Now we'll use these packages for our component declarations for all the rest of the uh, examples that we do in the book and on these slides. And uh, it turns out you can keep adding to the package. You don't have to make a new package for each program. That is, the clock divs and things that you reuse, you can just add new components. So the package can, can, can contain lots more components that, than you use in your design. So it makes it easy to package up these components in a package and include them at the beginning of your program.